USC has not lost a November game under Pete Carroll. Now that dates back to when he started in 2001. They're 24 and 0. Can they make it 25 and 0 by beating a ranked opponent? in Cal. Hey, how are you folks? Jason Horowitz. Glad to be with you on the college football previews presented by AT&T. Let's find out and break it down with Spencer Tillman. And uh, Spence, when you talk about USC, we'll get to the game in a sec. Years past, they've had a loss, but still been looked at as one of the best teams in the nation. This year, they're falling spots, even though they're blowing yep. teams out. Why is USC not looked at the same way this year as in years past? Well, that's an excellent question, and, and I, all I can say is that uh, typically their strength in numbers, that works when you're good. When you're not good, there's the antithesis. It's the opposite. You're weak. Other than USC, there's no one else in the Pac-10 that's that stellar. So that's why they're suffering right now, at least in the computer polls. But if you'll notice that their future uh, and their success and, and all of the, the, the image and impression that is applied to everybody else who's got a brand name, it starts to take a major hit when Ohio State loses because USC haven't beaten Ohio State. Their fortunes are interconnected with one another. And so if, if Ohio State had defeated Penn State, you would have seen USC stay pretty much where they are right now. The computers would have not shined brightly on them simply because the overall weakness of the Pac-10. But again, uh, that really is the, the short answer to your question. Spence, one thing though that has been good since that loss to Oregon State is the defense. Uh, they've given yeah. up 27 points in the last five <laughs> games and three of those five have been shutouts. But is that the competition or is the defense really that good? Listen, you never take anything away from a guy who really is, is unique in that Pac-10 conference. He's the only head coach with a solid and historic, in my opinion, defensive pedigree. That's what sets USC head and shoulders above everybody else in that conference, which for the last five to seven years has all been about offense for the most part. So Pete Carroll's got a decided advantage in that department. So uh, this USC defense has been great. Ray Maluga, their, their outstanding uh, linebacker, has been lights out. They've had a number of injuries in the first couple of weeks that they've recovered nicely from. The defense, the offense defensive side seems to be hit with them now, but the, the defense has carried them through that tough period. As you noted, the shutouts have been quite impressive, but again, you almost have to put an asterisk beside it because it's coming against lesser talent, in my opinion, in terms of offense. Washington, Washington yep. State, those are the two, you bet. two of the three uh, that they've shut out, uh, especially of late. Now, when you look at Cal, Jeff Tedford, the head coach, has a little bit of a problem because Kevin Riley mm -hmm. has been his quarterback for most of the year. Concussion last week in the win against yeah. Oregon. As we're taping this, he still hasn't announced a starter, whether it's going to be Riley or Nate Longshore. How big of a problem is that heading into the week of USC? <laughs> well, it, it's a tough spot. And again, that's one of the mysteries of this conference, and particularly as it relates to Cal and Jeff Tedford and his quarterback, Nate Longshore. He has been grooming him for a long time to be that number one. And I'm not sure exactly what happened, but something along the way he lost favor with Nate Longshore, or Nate Longshore lost favor with Jeff Tedford. And that has been a very, very liquid situation at quarterback for them. But uh, that Combined with the, court, the the running back issues that they're having recently, Javid Best has, hasn't been able to hang on to the football. is problematic for them, so they've got to get that stabilized on the offensive side of the ball. And he's had some injuries as well. So, Spence, what is mm -hmm. the key for Cal to pull off the upset in this game? Well, USC has some problems at quarterback as well, okay? I mean, they haven't necessarily been as efficient. You know, go back three or four weeks ago, Mark Sanchez was off the chain. I mean, he was unbelievable. But uh, because of the shutouts, uh, Pete Carroll has taken his players out. And so they haven't gotten the consistency that they would have against solid competition that pushes them. So the starters haven't been in the duration of the game. So uh, they need to shore up some things on the offensive side of the ball. I think what Cal needs to do, in short, is to have some explosive plays. And because they're struggling at the quarterback position, one coming off a concussion, the other one out of favor with his head coach. That's going to be an issue. Javid Best fumbled twice in the first half against Oregon. Last time he was out, he was benched. So that's an issue. So they've got to find a solution on the offensive side of the ball to have any remote chance of getting a win. Last year, big plays would be Deshaun Jackson. This year, it would be Boateng, yep. the wide receiver. We'll see if he can get going mm -hmm. because we know USC is going to have some big plays with Damian Williams <laughs> and, and Patrick Turner. We know they're going to have bet. Uh, some big plays. All right, Spence, any chance you think Cal wins? No, there's no way Cal wins. Uh, I don't think it necessarily will be a shutout. Uh, USC going for their fourth straight, but USC should win this one handily and uh, maybe try to get back on that love train in terms of the polls and how they feel about them. <laughs> all right, riding that love train. Thanks, Mr. OJ. Yeah, that's Appreciate right, it. Yeah, all right. <laughs> uh, loving the OJs. All right, the game 8 p.m. Eastern. Spencer Tillman, we'll see you Saturday afternoon on CBS.
All right, Jason, we'll see you. All right, folks, and don't forget the game that you'll see on CBS this weekend, this on Saturday afternoon. That is LSU hosting Alabama and Nick Saban's return to Baton Rouge. It is SEC on CBS. And of course, for that, you could also see SEC Live presented by AT&T on CBSSports.com. 3.30 p.m. Eastern kickoff once again. For Spencer Tillman, I'm Jason Horowitz. Take care, folks.